I'm feeling I like a dude who fucked his life up and then gets it back together on purpose. Let's go, Jack! What's up, guys? Welcome back to Good Bro, Bad Bro. The show that helps young men improve their dating skills, their social skills, and meeting and talking to girls, making friend groups, finding your purpose, your passion in life, and having a good time because we are in a time where even though it's the easiest time to ever be alive, we're more stressed out than ever. Life is just really confusing. And today's episode in particular, we're going to be focusing on the seasonal timing that we're going through, which would be cuffing season. For those that don't know, Cuffing season is the season where you get cuffed up, which is where you and a girl or a partner, somebody that you're dating, are locked in for at least a couple of months. And this season happens to line up with winter. For those of you that are also in a cold climate like us, Canada, certain parts of the United States or around the world, when it's winter time, it's cuffing season. What are your thoughts on cuffing season? Buddy, I believe cuffing season begins on November 1st and it ends on February 15th. I think the time between those two dates is officially cuffing season. Very specific window. Why November 1st? Well, if you think about, you know, hot girl summer is kind of the antithesis of cuffing season. Mm-hmm. Hot girl summer is basically when things get warmed up, everyone gets single, they go out, they want to have a good time. They just are focused on partying and enjoying life and not really getting into relationships. Right. And as it starts to get colder out and as summer kind of comes to an end and commitments start to get a little more serious throughout the year, Halloween is really the last party night where people get out, they get sweaty, they get Mm -hmm. slutty, they put on their little bunny costume or their cop costume, whatever, and they just go ham in single mode. The day after Halloween feels like the temperature drops 20 degrees overnight. Mm Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving's right around the corner. Yeah. And people are like, oh shit. Super serious. Grandma's going to fucking ask me again, why I don't I have a boyfriend? Why I don't I have a girlfriend yet? Mm-hmm. It's coughing season. There's a fertility window, you know? The clock <laughs> starts ticking, bro. It really does, man. Next holiday, Christmas. Boom. And Thanksgiving's when you go home and, you know, your family asks you, like, where's your significant other? Mm-hmm. Christmas is where they expect you to show up with them, right? Yeah. Now, here's why it ends on February 15th, Jack. Couples, you know, they get together, Mm -hmm. they take all the cute Christmas market photos over the holidays, they have Christmas together. New Year's is the first time since Halloween where people get fucking buck wild drunk, like blackout drunk. But now they're with their significant other and booze brings out your demons, bro. Brings Mm -hmm. out the worst in everyone. Yeah. I think people get way too drunk on New Year's Eve. They get in some stupid fight, some sort of infidelity comes up or something like that. But man you know valentine's day is just around the corner and we booked that vacation or i got that reservation to his favorite restaurant whatever Mm -hmm. they stay together for valentine's day but the day after valentine's day that thing's fucking done yeah and now in the social media era if there's no post on valentine's day it's over oh my god can you imagine not having a valentine's day boo while all your friends do you know, in the social media world, the value of the currency there, um, everybody wants to have somebody to take a photo with for Halloween if they're seeing somebody like the couple. You do a couple's costume, right? But you can let that one slide, right? Maybe you're seeing some chick, you take a picture with her, but it's not serious, whatever. But you could just be the costume. You could be you and your friends dressed up. Like Halloween is whatever. Mm-hmm. Christmas, you could be seeing somebody. But hey, you know, Christmas is about family. It's about christmas it's about the tree it's about santa you don't have to post a photo with them because it's not about them it's about christmas new year's you're starting to lean more towards grateful for for this one happy for this one you know starting the year off right Mm -hmm. booking a hotel going out to a big ball drop at the club lots of hype there right oh yeah and that means you're going to be dressed to a t it's like halloween Halloween is an excuse for girls to dress super scandalous and show off their bodies. And it's awesome, man. Shout out to all the queens out there dressing up super hot for Halloween. As dudes, we fucking love it. We dress up however we want. Like maybe we do a funny thing. We dress up like an idiot. Girls want to look hot, bro. They want to look fucking hot. If they have an ugly costume, (laughs) well... (laughs) You know, it's, I, you know what? I kind of rate those girls who wear like the scary costume on Halloween. Yeah. Because, you know, like deep down, like those are the real baddies. Like yeah. they don't even need to show you. Well, they have a sense of humor, bro. Yeah. Like if you're a hot girl on Halloween and you dress up as a fucking cat, 
the only reason anybody thinks that that's remotely relative and acceptable is because you're hot, right? But if you're a fucking girl that's hot and you dress up as something funny like Wayne's World or uh, a character from a trending TV show or like even a fucking banana, you're communicating a sense of humor, not just, hey, look at how hot I am and look at how fucking lazy I am dressing up as a cat or an angel or a devil for the 50th time. Mm -hmm. But they can get away with that because guys are realistically going to be down whatever, right? Because we have that physical mind, right? Yeah. I'm double tapping all those picks. 100%. But anyways... Moving on to New Year's. New Year's is where the couple photo starts to become a thing, though. Because generally speaking, Halloween is with everybody. You're dressed up in a costume. Super casual. Christmas. Family. Tree. New Year's Eve. You're usually doing that with somebody else. Or you're with all your girls, your friends. It's like a, you know, bottles and champagne. And I think New Year's Eve is like the club night for people that don't club. It's like the club night. There's the old get that make out right on the eve of... Oh, uh, you need that. That New Year's Eve make out kiss right when the bell drops. The fucking glitter drops from the sky. Oh, yeah. Bro. Moving on to Valentine's Day. Mm. That's couples day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, if you post a photo by yourself on Valentine's Day, either your high... Val- Don't what? post a photo at all. <laughs> wait, till, <laughs> wait till the fucking 15. I started saying, I started saying it and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Yo, that's what I'm doing this Valentine's Day. I'm yeah. posting a photo of my fucking self. <laughs> yeah. You can only get away with it if you're a hot girl and it's like, don't have a Valentine, don't need one. You know, like, well, they do that. Like, yeah. You know, basically what you're saying is like, I don't have a guy for Valentine's Day. So you are all going to compete in my DMs now for who I give my attention. She has a lot of Valentines at that point. Dude, and I, I've fallen for that one too. Back in the uh, back in the old days. Oh yeah. Um, dudes don't post on Valentine's Day. They just avoid those two weeks. They're like, not even on there. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Getting back to the actual definition of cupping season. Got a little bit of research. I'm going to pull up on the screen for you guys here. But uh, leading into this, most people are actually single during the summertime. There's a couple of reasons for that, right? It's very sexualized. A lot of the interactions are based purely on physical attraction because you can show people your body, your fitness. Like if you're a girl, you can show all those nice bikini pics, like the hip to rate weight ratio. Um, you know, girls are tanning. Basically, the summer is like, hey, this is what's available. This is what I'm selling. Okay, this is what I have, guys. Here's my value. Here's my body, right? Men, we can be attractive to women in different ways because we don't need to be as physically attractive to women as we need to think a woman is attractive, right? Right. But what guys do is they work out, they get in good shape, and then they go on a kill rampage. And that's what I usually do in the summertime too. Mm -hmm. And basically in the summer, everybody's single, everybody's home, it's chill. Weekends, everybody's hanging out. Most people that work nine to fives, they take weekends off in the summer. It might just be a Canadian thing, but like here in Canada, summer is like chill, relaxed time, right? So there's lots of hookups, but a lot of stuff isn't, serious it's very like hey we're going out to do stuff meet new people there's more options there's more like a one night stand vibe Mm -hmm. and a lot of people that are back home maybe they live somewhere else but they're visiting friends family since they're on vacation there's a very uh strong sense of like this is not permanent Mm -hmm. so that's summer and recently it's been turned into you know hot girl summer oh yeah every summer pretty much i love hot girl summer right so that's the preface to cuffing season. Um, September, this is when things start to get interesting. So in Canada, we have winter from, like you said, pretty much November to February. But here in Canada, it just fucking sticks around a little longer. Bro. Yeah. It's actually like mid-March. It's kind of bullshit. And during that season, we have shit weather, but we have all those key holidays. Okay. Now, cuffing season lines up with what we like to call cabin fever in Canada. So winter time. Mm. You slowly go outside less. You don't tolerate things that you would when it's not winter. For example, summertime doesn't get dark till about 10 p.m. at night. Mm-hmm. Winter, it starts out like 7, 8, and then it drops down till how it is now. It's like 4.30. Yeah. 4.30, guys. Brutal. Like, you're not even done work and it's pitch black outside. Done. Another thing, too, is like, going out clubbing and shit in the summer if you gotta wait in line a little bit like not a big deal you're in a t-shirt a dress whatever yeah. it's not bad 
bro, you can't catch me fucking dead in a pea coat in a lineup in this weather. No. It's too cold. No. I'm not waiting outside. I would rather literally just stay in and watch Netflix. Yeah. In this time of year. Nobody's comfy, right? And you need to be in a comfy, relaxed state to even talk to other people or like be able to be talked to. You can tell when somebody's nervous or uncomfortable when they're just on their phone, right? They want whatever's happening to just go away. So they're like, oh, fuck, I got to go on my phone. You see this a lot in like a doctor's office. People are bored out of their fucking face. Oh, yeah. On the phone. Summertime, you're like, man, those are fucking kind of nice. That guy's doing that over there. That person, look at their shirt. Like, you're just in a more like, everything's kind of nice. Mood. It's so true, man. You know, a real sign of it. Like, I feel like in the summer, if you were walking past a patio and you saw someone you knew on it, you'd probably like be like, oh, hey, Mackenzie, like, how's it going? Bro, in the winter, you see someone you know on the street, you're kind of like, man, I'm trying to get to my fucking car. Like, Bro, you're like fucking... Put your hood up, like, look the other way. Yeah, dude, you don't want to fucking <laughs> chill there. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's anti-social right. climate mm-hmm. this time of year. That's right. Plus, you're just generally uncomfortable because it's cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, the clothing you're wearing, like, for a woman, man, like... A woman's mating strategy is to post objectifying photos of herself so that she looks really attractive physically to men on social media. And that's basically just borrowing the strategy of what a girl does when she goes to a club. She wants to dress super hot. She wants to show off her physical assets, right? She didn't fucking do 100 sit-ups so that she could wear a parka. (laughs) (laughs) They want you to know like, hey, I'm fucking hot. And once they get into the club, they can do that. But the problem is, Before they get into the club, like, that's not a good mood. Like, you're wearing a coat, you're wearing a skirt, and you're fucking freezing because it's, like, minus 10 and you're standing in line. And your friend that says she knows somebody in the club, that's the best, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know somebody's going to get us in. Oh, he's not texting me back. He's not replying. Oh, I know the security. Like, man, some girls just get stuck in line like a human being and have to actually wait. And they're not dressed for it, bro. (laughs) Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. Dude, same thing. Uh, one of the biggest copes is alcohol. If you get drunk, it's not as cold out. That's true. Yeah. But they always say hoes don't get cold. I've heard a lot of girls say that. That's facts, bro. That was in the Bible. Mm. Hoes don't get cold. Ho 316. <laughs> <laughs> Old Testament. <laughs> but yeah, dude. So that's the start of it. That's the overall mood. And um, most girls, believe it or not, are introverted. And they don't actually like going out to clubs more than they need to. They would be a lot happier if they just found a good a good guy and could do some other shit. But that toxic fucking, I got to be the center of attention. I got to be on social media doing shit. It's like a spell that goes mm-hmm. over girls. But a lot of girls at heart, they don't want to go to clubs all the time. They actually want to just chill in the house, right? And one of the things that makes them realize that is they go, well, not only do I want to be doing this anyways, but my friends also kind of want to get that, you know, stay at home kind of vibe, find a cool dude. And it's also now it's cold and uncomfortable. So all of it mashes together Mm -hmm. perfectly as a transitionary period into wintertime cuffing season. Yeah. Now, this correlates completely perfectly with college and university timeline. Everybody comes back in September. What are we doing? We're fucking hitting keggers. We're seeing all the old kills from last year. Yeah, We're going to Hoko. Hoko. Trying to get a pick with Jack Denmo. New kills, old kills, day kills, night kills, you know. You Subway kills, Timmy's 50, kills. <laughs> you got 50-year-olds like me just fucking praying <laughs> on <laughs> university girls. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of guys like uh, that basically, you know, in the uh, 18 to, let's say, 30 range that are basically going back to school, right? Single mm-hmm. or in a relationship. But September's fucking lit, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's still summer weather. School's a joke. Like, September school's a fucking joke. Nobody's doing homework. Like, the first week is just like, yo, Mr. fucking Simpson, what's up, brother? I haven't seen you. What did you do this summer, you know? All your boys you haven't talked to, you know? First weekend, everybody just fucking links up, darties, like, super chill. Yeah. Relaxing. We're laughing. Easy money. Right. What's going on? You're transitioning from that fucking single summer? And no responsibilities, still warm, but now you're back around everybody, okay? Mm-hmm. And the reason, you know, you guys may be wondering, like, why am I talking about the fucking university college group? That's the target demographic here. Those are the guys that need the most help. 18 to 25-year-old guys are the ones that need the most help when it comes to dating. Girls have it easy. They just have to exist. Guys actually have to perform and put in work. 
That's the sad truth. And I wish I knew all that stuff when I was that age. So eventually we're going to get to the older, more intermediate age stuff. But like for now, yeah, we're going to focus on the guys that need the most help. Mm. And yeah, it lines up with that. Even if you're not in school, this still applies. But um, anyways, towards the end of September, this is when you actually start to have to do shit in class. This yeah. is when, you know, some parties are getting shut down. You've had a couple weekends in a row on absolute benders, but it's like, okay, well, you know, we did that. Cool. It's starting to get cold. Midterms are starting to pile on, things That's like right. that. Midterms are right around the corner, okay? Midterms take place uh, generally first week to second week of October, and they are either followed by or initiated by a week off, which is called reading week. Or for some, breeding week. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, I have a whole thing on that, actually. Oh, that's we're gonna, huge. We're going to jump into it. Um, basically, yeah, the first time of the year would be the first reading week, okay? And that first reading week is when everybody goes home to visit their family and their high school friends, right? Yeah, it's about mid-October. Now, this is interesting because the weather's still not bad, right? You know, you got pumpkin spice latte season. You get to see your friends back home. You see your parents. Like, everything's chill. How's school? I don't know yet because I haven't really done anything <laughs> yet. <laughs> so there isn't that much pressure, you know, like there's no like, yeah, I failed. Um, and you're supposed to be studying, but realistically, like you're not. Yeah. Nobody's working. So you have time. Pretty chill. So this will be the first kind of pretest, I'd say, for cuffing season relationships, because this is where like maybe you start seeing somebody early October, end of September, but like you're going to go back home for a week. And it's way too premature to bring that person there. A hundred percent. You what? don't even know like if when you come back to school, it's still going to be a thing or if she's yeah. going to lose interest. Way too early, way too early. And mm. also like you're not ready to answer the question. Nobody's even ready to ask the question. Yeah. Like when your boys come home uh, reading week, you're not like, so you seeing any girls? It's like, yo, so like you get any kills lately? And the guy, even if he has a girlfriend, he'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm banging this one chick. You know, like no guy wants to, <laughs> yeah. you know, no guy wants to be like, yeah, I'm locked in already. Like, whoa, you're cuffed that early? That's ah, early, bro. Yeah, that's really early. If you're cuffed before reading week, you're fucking early. Bro, I could be like a year into a relationship. And if the boys ask me, I'd be like, yeah, I'm banging one girl. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and anyways, so there's that. And then uh, I think one of the biggest indicators of a, good sign prerequisite to cuffing season is uh there's a reality that reading week is too much premature to go to the person's house for one two uh logistically in university and college you go away to that school mm -hmm. so like she could be from ottawa he could be from toronto like it's two three hours on either side yeah it's out of the way it's basically out of state at that point anything more than like a one-day commitment too much too soon mm -hmm. so what i see and what i've experienced when i was in school is you meet up with them once during the reading week but it's at a halfway point mm. and the only reason you're meeting up isn't because you guys want to spend time for each other on the surface it's because yo this band is playing in toronto or there's this concert or one of our mutual friends from school is having a little darty right mm -hmm. you're not going out to have a fucking picnic together Oh, yeah. There's an event that just happens to be taking place in between. Right. So that's when you see them over that week. What's good about that is, you know, the idle mind after seven to ten days. Fuck, she's going home. She's fucking her ex back home. Mm. Oh, my God. He's going back and banging three girls. Yeah. All of that is relieved if there's a midweek nut. For sure. Or a Friday nut. What's the difference between a midweek nut and a Friday nut? I'd say a midweek nut is actually more valuable because it's in the middle of the week. And that means like, hey, like, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just making time mm. to be a nut or nut in a chick. But if it's a Friday, it's usually event based, weekend based. It's more like, hey, like, you know, I had other things to do during the week. But like now that it's my off time, now I can make time. Right. It's but a nut day. Yeah, but if it's in the middle of the week, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're dropping work to nut? That's like, that's imperative. That's, that's thirsty behavior. Thirsty, bro. If it's a guy, it's a thirsty. If it's a girl, it's like, man, this girl, she really likes me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the difference. If a guy wants to fuck, oh, that's thirsty. If a girl wants to fuck, it's like, man, like, dude, Veronica's really cool. 
bro. <laughs> she invited me over to her house on a reading week. Um, anyways, everybody goes back to school. And uh, depending how that test goes between uh, the girl and the guy when they're on that one reading week or the break, dude, dude, mm. after that break, there could be a lot of fucking insecurity, mm-hmm. right? People are like, what would what'd you do that week? You know, they're watching your Snapchat. Oh, but Did you visit your ex? Yeah, that's What's tough. What's her name? That's tough. Yeah. It almost takes the maturity to like not ask. Yeah. And just pretend there wasn't even a, a reading week. No. You know, you just got to pretend that your baby girl wasn't just getting smashed (sighs) by the local hometown heroes that week. One can only hope, you know, that's a big thing too. Like you're hanging out with a girl regularly, goes home for a week, taking a while to reply now. Yeah. That's a big one. Right. And Mm. another part of it is too, is like, you know, her in this context where think about it, you go to university out of town, you can become a completely new person. Yeah. Right. Like it's a real. lot of people really like hide who they are in high school. They kind of just become who they are in university. They're like finally, I could just be myself. That's the best part about uh, getting out of high school. People don't 100%. care anymore. Everyone's like, "Yo, like I don't whatever you're into, fuck whatever." Like the shit that gets you bullied in high school is the shit that they celebrate you for after high school. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, oh, you like playing like World of Warcraft? Like, dude, that's fucking sick. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Or if even if you don't like it, it's like cool we could still be friends yeah but if not it's like yo you hang out with the guy that fucking plays warcraft yeah dude but point being is like your girl at school like you could know her as like oh that's my baby girl like wholesome vibes Mm. back home like who knows you know oh yeah what she's like in the hometown right yeah she's getting trains run out her bro could be same with dudes call them undercover fuck boys yeah you know in school super nice stellar guy go home you have their whole roster waiting (laughs) for you (laughs) oh They're all back home for a week, too. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's just... Line them up. Clapping cheeks. But then you go back, like, yeah, I saw some friends. <laughs> <laughs> Visited my family. <laughs> you know, my grandparents. Saw the nephew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> saw my extended fucking third cousin-in-law. <laughs> See any girls? Oh, I was busy. <laughs> well. <laughs> so anyways, you get back now. Now shit's starting to get uh, more serious. Because here's how women are. They, uh, they like structure. They like predictability. And they like to be organized and they get stressed out when there's uncertainty. Women actually need uncertainty to an extent to be attracted to men. Because if you're predictable, women just don't give a fuck about you. They'll just run you over with their snowmobile and keep on blowing. But um, testing and exams and shit starts rolling around the corner. You don't know if you're going to pass or not. You don't know fucking what's going to be on the test. You know, women start to get stressed the fuck out, right? Yeah. Now, at this point, they're all living in the same house, too. So they're all in the same period cycle. Mm. So together, they all get stressed the fuck out. Right. So you just have these time bombs of like students, girls in particular, that are like all living in the same house. They're all on the same fucking period cycle. Like if there's more than four of them in one house, but there's only like one or two bathrooms. Every morning, they have like specific time slots for when they go to the bathroom. Mm. And if one day Marissa takes an extra 10 minutes in the shower, it fucks up the next girl's shower. Next thing you know, they don't like each other. So the two girls that didn't get to shower on time, they secretly don't like that girl. And then, bro, it just turns into a cesspool of drama. They start to pull each other apart from the inside out. Yeah. What's their escape? A boyfriend. I thought you were going to say like K-pop. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Tim no. Biebs. I find that a lot of girls that get into relationships, they don't actually want to be with the guy. They just don't like the situation they're in at home or mm. in school. And they're like, fuck, I need somebody to keep me busy. And yeah. guys fall right into it. I've been in a few of those now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> More than I'd like to admit. Yeah. You ever hang out with a girl and you could tell she's hanging out with you just to get away from other people? Dude, yeah. What a fucking feeling that is. Right. Sometimes I'm like, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> so you don't realize that shit till you're in your mid twenties. Then you go, oh, fuck. Yeah. I remember I went on this one date with this one girl. It was cool. Like, we uh, went to some bar near her fucking student house, and we we're just chilling, and we we're chopping up about like you know her life back home, and you know she loves her parents and all that. So I was like, yo, like, so what are the people like you live with? And she's like, well, like, you know, we're at war with the girls downstairs right now. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, like we all moved in together, but you know, the girls upstairs, they will party all night and we'll be trying to sleep and they're so loud. They have friends over, but then they leave the dishes out 
And then in the morning we go to cook, but the stove's covered in booze. And bro, this shit drives women fucking nuts. And instead it, of it would drive me nuts too, bro, man. It would drive me nuts too. But guys will just be like, "Yo, deal with this, put it away." But girls, they won't say anything because mm. they don't want to reject others. Women hate rejecting women and men because basically they have to confront them, tell them that they don't like whatever it is about them. And then they have to hear, hear that negative feedback. Girls don't like hearing negative feedback, bro. So a girl confronting another girl, that's fucking rare. That is rare. And whenever it does happen, it's bad. It's mm. like it escalates quick, bro. Damn, dude. And all that is stressful. And what would they rather have? A dude they could spend time with. Because yeah. they're lonely in there. You know what's funny is like, I feel like there's two kinds of girls. Well, maybe not. But like, you ever hang out with a girl who like only hangs out with girls? And then hang out with a girl who only hangs out with guys. Yeah. Like such a big difference in like the way she is. But like the girls who only hang out with girls, when you hang out with them, they're like, finally. And they just start talking shit about all the girls that they hang out with. Bingo. <laughs> there it is, bro. That's exactly what happened with this bird. She uh, started telling me about all this shit, the war that's going on in the house. And like they pick sides, right? Yeah. There'll be six girls. It's three on three. Dude, sometimes it'll be four on one or something. Oh. And, then, and then you got that one girl that's too nice to pick a side and she's the only friend that that other girl has mm -hmm. but like yeah dude it's it gets pretty bad so that's another incentive women are stressed they don't like the girls like the whole reason that they got away from their parents is like yo i can't stand them so they're like fuck i just need a boyfriend i need somebody to keep me company somebody to cuddle me somebody to support me and guide me emotionally while i get through this stressful period mm -hmm. and then once that stressful period's over and she's not as stressed out. She doesn't need that guy anymore. And just tosses him to the side of the road. And he, the whole time, is like, man, this girl really likes me. She invites me over. Like, Yeah. He, she wants to spend all this time with me. She must really, really like me. No, she just hates <laughs> what's going on in her life right now. That's it. That's tough. Yeah. That's a lot deeper than I thought I'd get into it. But that's a, dude, that's a, that's a totally true thing. Holy like, shit. Girls will be in a bad spot in their life. And instead of figuring it out on their own, they'll be like, fuck it. Time to get a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, buddy, I guess we can learn from them and do the same for ourselves. Yeah, it's interesting with men because um, it's kind of the opposite. Because we have to get everything going and figure it out. And mm -hmm. then the girls come. Yeah. Women, they're like, no, no, no. I'm stressed. Man, right now. It's crazy. Yeah. What a dichotomy. So let me ask you this, right? We're at, you know, the first reading week. We come back. We come back from that week, you know, let's assume things keep going, keep dating. Things are getting a little more serious now. Mm. Things are pretty much getting to the point where it's like pretty much boyfriend, girlfriend, but winter break finals all coming up. Buddy, we're not even there yet. Oh, we're not there yet. Thanksgiving, buddy. Okay. Take a step back. Okay. Well, well, Thanksgiving's a family gathering. That's the first one. Okay. Bro, if she brings you over for Thanksgiving after you've only been seeing each other for like a month, she likes you, bro. Yeah. You're locked in. You're fucking locked. You're in. cuffed. Yeah. That's like the first, the first, that's the first clink right there. The reason I bring this up is because it's different between Canada and the USA. Like our Thanksgiving is like two or three weeks apart. Yeah. So it's different time. Um, but the next one is what we talked about earlier. Halloween. Halloween is actually the first, uh, I would say like time for breakups, right? Because if you're a girl and you get out of a relationship even though you have a lot of options and can easily just go out and smash dudes right away at the club with your friends, there's no like excuse to, you know, you'd just totally be going out of your way to get a rebound. But if Halloween's coming up, then it's like, Hey, I'm going to be there anyway, dressed up hot with all my girls. Anyway, one thing may lead to another. Right? One thing may lead to another. Yeah. Plus you're advertising it like, Look, if a girl gets out of a relationship, then all of a sudden starts posting hot, sus, thirsty pics. Yeah. Super obvious. But if it's Halloween, <laughs> it's just my costume. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Exactly. A little bunny ear action. Boom. But if you are wheeling a girl and you're ready to kind of like, you know, it'd be a little bit uh, thirsty to be like, yo, Thanksgiving. Well, that's a bit too premature. Halloween's pretty casual though. Like, yo, like, what are you doing for Halloween? We should, uh, I'm doing a costume this day with my buddies, but how about the next day? Like we could do some funny shit like me and you and casual, like it's Halloween, you know? Yeah. Throw it in there. Yeah. It's an excuse to do something like, Hey, we could do, it's about the costume, you know? Yeah. It's not about you. I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just need someone to be, yeah, you know, yeah, the uh, peanut butter to my jelly. Yeah, and girls, low key, they're waiting for a guy to ask for this. You know, mm-hmm. they're like, yo, like, what am I doing for Halloween? Like, a yeah. girl doesn't want to have to ask a guy to do Halloween with her. Like, I have a theory. I'm calling it right now. Every girl that wears like angel, cat, or other some other dumb fucking easy lazy Halloween costume, they low key wanted a guy to ask them out for Halloween. Whoa. Do a costume with them, but no guy came through. So they had to do a last minute, easy, stereotypical costume. They had to go back to default. Wow. Think about that. Whoa. Do you think girls want to dress as cats and fucking rabbits for Halloween? No. Yeah, I thought so. No. Well, they want to show off their bodies, but they want to do something themed, right? That's a backup, right? Damn, dude. Crazy, eh? You blew my mind there. It's so I true. Blew my own fucking mind. Holy I didn't even shit. think about that. Because like, as, for me, like I I always dress as something lazy because I'm just fucking lazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, girls don't have to dress up at all. Yeah. They can just put on a bra and <laughs> oh, I'm Laura Croft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wear my underwear. I'm Captain Underpants. Yeah. <laughs> if it's Halloween and you see a girl that's wearing like a bunny costume or like mm. a devil, some lazy shit. Yeah. They wanted a guy to do something with but he dropped the ball it's almost like a another version of the prom posal yeah like the halloween posal dude yeah yeah yeah. and it's casual yeah way 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 lower stakes talk about an easy way to shoot your shot yeah you know what i mean the old like it's not even like a real date no but you have such an in yeah and you have a beer pong partner for the night exactly and as a guy you can communicate sense of humor creativity uh, social proof like if you and six year guys dress up as like a group costume that's like okay well he has five guys that he hangs out with to the point where they like him enough that all of them dress up as the same thing yeah like that's social proof and a half bro. that's it yeah perfect shoot your shot time and now another thing too everybody takes photos on Halloween mm-hmm. you know everybody posts they want everybody to know they did something well once you put up a photo with the guy that you started seeing the girl you started seeing mm-hmm you're kind of letting the internet know that you have an investment in this relationship, whether yeah. it's a situationship or a relationship in general. You're kind of putting yourself out there in a way where there's social pressure for that thing not to fail. Because Oh, be, I didn't even think about that. Think about it. It'd almost be a waste if you were to put up a pic with that significant other for Halloween yeah. and then not have the fucking Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day pic with them. That would be like a fucking failure if you didn't make it to those other milestones with them. Bro, Halloween pictures as a couple on social media are like down payments. Yeah. You put it down. And then the idea is you're going to buy something bigger later on. Like you get that Halloween pick. That's pretty, you know, could go either way. Get your money back. Christmas though, New Year's, bro, Halloween's the first investment. Yeah. On the other angle too, it's also pre-selection. Right? It's like, hey, look, I have options. It really is, bro. And there's a lot of people, by the way, who see these Halloween picks and they, they're already thinking like, shit, I'm too late. I haven't started investing in coughing season yet. Yeah. And there's a bit of panic buying around that point. And that's why I say November 1st is day one of Yo, coughing season. Yeah. Because that's when you start to fucking feel it. The ticker. Yeah. Competition anxiety between women. Yeah. She has a guy. Mm-hmm. They took a photo on Halloween. It's on there now. Yeah. My photo is just me and fucking slutty cat. <laughs> right. You know, but here's the thing. All the other people that didn't have, you know, the guys really that are still on the market that went as whatever for Halloween, they see that she also is posing alone. Because if a girl doesn't post a photo with her guy on Halloween, what she's saying is, hey, I'm still on the market. Mm-hmm. So that's when you know who's available and who's not. Facts. The pressure starts, but also like, hey, like the game started now. The mm-hmm. It's open season now. Oh, yeah. Because if she liked the guy, she wants to show him off. You know, you ever go to a girl who's like been posting on Instagram for a time and like you see a Halloween pic with a guy from like a couple Halloweens ago, but she didn't post one this Halloween. Mm. That's that gray area where like, in my opinion, allegedly, it's kind of open season. Could be on like, the decline. where was he this year? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. And even if the guy is like, well, you know, he just didn't want to dress up. He was lazy, didn't want to participate. Like, that's something that a low value guy would say. Yeah. You know, like you're not aware of what message this sends to other people. Mm -hmm. Right. I know it's stupid, but like you have to show face. If the girl isn't posting a photo with you, it could mean that you're not really high value anymore. 
Mm -hmm. I don't get that same kickback like I did because girls get more likes when it's just them and they know that, right? So they're actually being like, okay, well, if I don't post with him, more guys get to see the photo and it sends a message, right? Right. And I imagine girls, they pay attention to this stuff a lot more than us fucking cavemen do. And when they see that a girl posts a photo without her guy for a seasonal event like Halloween or Christmas, they're like, what's going on? What's, what's going what's on with Mark? What's wrong? Yeah, what's wrong? Oh, yeah. What's wrong? What did he do wrong? Yeah. And if you're the guy who went as a couple costume and she didn't post your photo, like, I'm sorry, buddy. Buddy. She's not that into you. Yeah. Been there. Been yeah. there. And you know what? It could also be that we're just at the early stages of cuffing season. Could be. You know, maybe she didn't post any photo at all. If you guys did Halloween and she didn't post any photo at all, maybe she just didn't want to post a photo, period. Mm. But if she posts one without you, you got to start paying attention. Not good. Yeah. Anyways. It's a red flag. Now moving on closer to Christmas. So, you know, end of the year, everybody's busy, exams. During that week, you know, people that normally spend a lot of time together, it goes one of two ways. Either one, they spend less time together because they're busier, right? In exams. Or two... It's like the honeymoon effect. They spend way more time together because now they actually have to save time. So it's easier for them to sleep over. It's easier for them to work together. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's when people start to really get close. Especially like now, you know, we don't have time to like glam up and go out and no, we're just trying to rip some Uber Eats, you know, sweatpants, hair tied, chilling with no makeup on. That's right. You know what I mean? Everybody looks the same naked. Yeah. And you've already kind of won the person into your, uh, you know, immediate vicinity. You don't have to go out and uh, court them anymore. Mm -hmm. You're already smashing. You start farting in front of them and shit? No. Never. Bro, girls think farts are fucking, may as well be terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like ISIS comes out of your asshole. <laughs> Bro, if you fart in front of a fucking girl and she smells it, man, fuck. They don't like that. It's game over at that point, eh? Unless she's but, butch. Bro, if she sticks around after you fart... That's a keeper right there. Bro, if she farts back, get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, Christmas comes and that's when the talk comes. Yeah. Okay. Because Christmas, that's like a couple, a couple weeks. Couple two, weeks. Two, two and a half weeks. Yeah. Reading week's a fucking breeze. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christmas, two and a half. Family. Big family. Yeah. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Extended. Yep. Cousins, nephews, uncles, aunts, grandparents. Damn. So you seen anybody? That's going to come up. Oh, yeah, it is. You ever have your grandparents and shit? They give you that look like, so how's school? Mm -hmm. So how's uh, work? Mm -hmm. And you already know it's coming. Yeah. So you seeing anybody? Like, dude, they, yeah. that's all they wanted to know they in the first place. They want to know when the grandkids are coming. Pretty much. They're waiting on it. Yeah. So, um, and a lot of people, they want to have that status. It's mm -hmm. actually a status symbol to have a partner. Yeah. If you're a man and you bring back a girl for like Christmas or Halloween, it's like, look, you know. If, if she can tolerate me, then that means like I must have my shit together to an extent. Unless she's like a fucking two out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe happens. she has a great personality, Jack. Nah, bro. <laughs> no. The only reason a girl will date a guy is if he has his shit together. She either sees a lot of potential in him. Mm -hmm. He uh, First of all, you have to have the main basis cover. You have to be social you have to be confident you have to be experienced with other women you have to have other options like there's a whole list of shit but at the end of the day um you also have to have that little extra thing going on that it's worth commitment for a girl mm -hmm. because it's easy for girls to get sex it's hard for them to get commitment but it has to be like a guy that can keep his shit together because a guy can fuck a chick and then afterwards totally blow it and they don't bang again you yeah know? Or just get categorized, categorized as fuckboy, whatever. Um, but in order to like consistently be on point, that takes a special level of discipline and professionalism. And I'm saying this like, you know, it's like an art you guys should work up to. It's not. It's just called being a man. But The anyways, art of being a man. That's what it looks like, that's right? That's a fucking book title right there. Dude, employers, they want a guy that has a wife and kids because it shows stability. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, politicians. Name any successful politician that's single. Doesn't have a wife, doesn't have kids, bro. Presidents, prime ministers. It's a marketing thing. A lot of people, when they become a leader of a big party, if they're single, the first thing they do is get married. Yep. The first thing they do. Bro, there's questions if you don't have anybody. Why not? Mm -hmm. What are you, disagreeable? What are you, a loser? You don't even have a fucking, bro. 
they need to see that because they are kind of vicariously living through you yeah. in the political world. Same idea on a lower level back home. Uh, there's also, you know, for girls, it's a lot about what other people think, right? So like you want to show the other girls in high school, like, hey, look, I got a guy, you know, look better than my old man. You want to show your old boyfriend that's still in that hometown, like... <sighs> Yeah, it's funny too because I remember what it was like being away. I thought of people in my hometown, and I'd be like, "Oh, they're still there. They're not even in like a new school or new city. Mm -hmm. Like you almost look at them as second class, you know? Wow, you're like, wow, you stayed home. Yeah, but then when you become an adult, you go, oh, like it's the same shit. Yeah, but uh, it's a being a student's a status symbol. That's why you see every fucking girl of all time put her university in her Instagram bio. Like, tell me a girl that goes to university that doesn't put it in. Yeah, what is up with that? Bro, it's a status symbol. I'm better than you. I go to university. I feel like not as many guys do that as girls. No fucking dudes do, bro. Yeah, if you're a dude doing that, like, what are you doing? If that you're a dude doing that, you're networking, bro. If you're a girl doing that, that's just like base level. It's a status thing, bro. It's just like how every girl that's above a six or more has to have more followers than following. Mm-hmm. If a girl's following more than she has followers, then she's either a two out of 10 or she is like a hippie and just doesn't pay attention to it. Yeah. Like any girl watching this right now, look at your Instagram followers and tell me that I'm not wrong. If you're a hot girl, you'll have more followers than following. And girls actually judge guys on that too. If a guy's following more than he has followers. Oh yeah, bro. They're like, what are you fucking socially inept? When I realized that I unfollowed all of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> all those guys from high school yeah fuck you guys but you know what's funny they probably don't even notice because guys don't pay attention to them. yeah they don't care no they'll be like what <laughs> you know how many girls dm me why did you unfollow oh, me? oh dude oh yeah bro and you know what you know what they won't even tell you they'll they'll screenshot it to their other friend and then they'll start theorizing and debating it yeah like guys if you're listening to this every time you text something questionable to your girlfriend like she's screenshotting it and she's putting it in her group chat of other girls yeah. to get feedback. Like, yo, what does this mean? What's he doing? How do I respond? Like, they have a whole fucking network. Even if you're talking to a girl, like, over Tinder or whatever, she's going to take your fucking photos and send them to that group and be like, what do you guys know about him? Yeah. Who, yeah. Who's he dated before? What's the track record here? Pull up the hoe facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that used to fucking burn me a lot. Because yeah. I'd be seeing some girl and it'd be cool. And, you know, on the weekend, she'd hang out with her friends. They'd go on a little run around Bayfront Park or some shit. Like, hey, you seen anybody? Yeah, you know, met this guy, Jack. Oh, Jack who? What does he look like? Oh, like, you know, he's tall. He's showing a picture. Wait a second. Isn't that fuck? And then you're done. All of a sudden, you get ghosted and you have no idea why. Yeah. You didn't pass the whole facts, bro. We had a moment like that, actually. Which one? Where we found out we were talking to the same girl. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a guy version of that. Yeah. Actually, I th I'd say for girls, it's more of a like, you know, competition anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, either you catch it early and they're like, hey, we both won't do it or they compete and it ruins their friendship. Yeah. Guys, it's like, first of all, fuck, all women are like this. <laughs> it's like a nice reminder. Like, yeah, you thought this girl was like a goody two shoe or whatever. Yeah. Your buddy blew her black out two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> we had such different impressions about her. I know. It's so funny. <laughs> getting back to the cuffing season thing yeah there's the group chat analysis but christmas is big yeah like you're meeting the family the parents yeah and parents like if they're together it's a double date you know the dad takes his wife and two kids out or his, his daughter with her new boyfriend out they buy food he pays for the bill it's like a classic uh you know seasonal little dinner with the kids partner and there's also the divorce parents who like you know the guy could be a total train wreck but they just want to spend time with their kid mm -hmm. so they'll be like yeah baby no your new boyfriend's super cool because <laughs> <laughs> if, if they don't like him then you know their daughter's not gonna want to spend time with dad that they only get to see like every couple months anyways yeah right? so that's a tough situation being as a dad eh pretty tough bro yeah your daughter's dating some fucking toxic trash bag of a dude but like you know, if you don't approve of him as a divorced dad, then you're a dick. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? She's going to go just slam dudes to, you know, she's going to double down. Like one of the main reasons girls also date guys is because their parents don't like the guy mm -hmm. and they're like, fuck yeah. I like that. You don't like him. Yeah. 
It's like a rebellion almost. We call that daddy issues. Yeah. It's also in the Bible too. Yeah. The good bro, bad bro Bible. We should do a whole episode on daddy issues alone. That's a two part series. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So fucking anyways, <coughs> moving through cuffing season, you know, this is, this is probably the most in-depth anybody's ever gone about cuffing season. So hit the like button guys so far, all you guys, what made it this far. Um, we're going to get to new year's now. So new year's, you touched on it earlier. It's a big, like things could go wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. Because usually over that couple weeks of Christmas holiday break, there's a lot of scarcity. You know, you're seeing hometown friends, you have commitments, maybe you pick up a couple shifts at your old job. Yeah. That's a big one. So you're working. Your communication is down. Communication's down. You have more options. You're back home. Mm-hmm. You're far away, right? And what happens is there becomes a miscommunication about what's happening for New Year's. You don't hear till the last minute. Your other friend offers you something, but like dude, we need to book the hotel now. So like, are you in, are you out? Mm-hmm. And then what happens is it's like two or three days before and both of you made separate plans. And there comes a time where one of you either has to cancel on your original plans to go with the other or you guys do your separate thing. And if you do your separate thing, oh, game over. You're done. If you have a girlfriend and you don't spend New Year's with her, it's over. It's toast. You're done. Dead. R.I.P. So what you got to do is fucking make the plans early Mm -hmm. to prevent that whole thing from happening. Okay. Because that whole night, what are you going to be doing? You're going to be blowing up the other person's phone. Like, you know, why didn't you come to this? Come to that. And then, you know, Chad's going to roll into the party. You know, Chad, bro. Oh, yeah. There's good, bro. There's bad, bro. And then there's Chad, bro. (sighs) Chad doesn't give a fuck, dude. Worst nightmare. He's got his whole roster going. Just Mm -hmm. at Christmas, he's filled up. Filled up a couple birds. He knows the promoter. He's got a fucking table booked with the boys. He's got a fucking bottle. Abundance mindset. He comes in with a couple birds with him. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Sees you. You're dressed to the T's. You're mad at your boyfriend. (laughs) Classic. It's over. Dude, it's done. And what's the guy doing too? He's calling her. (laughs) She's not picking up. He's stressed. The boyfriend is fucking panicking. Yeah. He's losing frame. Meanwhile, Chad is just pouring tequila down your girl's throat. Yeah. <sighs> Chad's being an asshole, too. She's like, I can't believe he talks to me like that. And I like it. You pouring know? a little on her forehead. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, goody two-shoe boyfriend. He's back home. He's miserable. The amount of times that I'd be hooking up with a girl and then, you know, she pulls out her phone and it's just like eight missed calls from the same guy. And he has a little heart next to his fucking contact name. Oh, Yeah. But you don't want to say anything because you want to bang the chick. You ever been like, you know, going at it and her phone's on the bed just buzzing? Yeah. And you know, yeah. you know who that caller is. Oh, yeah. It's fucking nuts. That's when man. I bring out my third gear. And that's why you don't want to bang older women, too. Uh, little side story. I'll tell the story another day. But I banged this chick that was married, bro. She was dating Whoa. this big Polish dude. He starts calling her like, yo, where are you? Shit. Fucking, I was sketched, bro. So New Year's, that's a big photo opportunity. Once again, if you're dating somebody for New Year's and um, you get some bomb po- photos together, but she posts one without you. Like if she posts it with friends, you know, whatever, gray area. But mm. if she posts a photo of her by herself dressed to the fucking bleachers on New Year's, you're in a suit, but you're the one holding the camera. Like, bro, it's over. It's not good. It's the beginning of the end, man. Yeah. It sends a fucking message to everybody watching on the sidelines. They know what's going on. So Mm -hmm. anyways, after New Year's, if you can pass that test, Christmas is a big one. So that one, like, it's pretty hard to fuck up New Year's, especially for all you kings watching that now know you have to set up plans ahead of time. And another thing, too, um, you don't want to cancel your plans and do the girls' plans. You want to, like, make it seem like you decided it together. Mm -hmm. Because what does that say about you that, like, you're willing to cancel on all your boys to go and spend New Year's with your friend or your girlfriend. I did that once, bro. It was so awful. Yeah. Yeah. Not only is it a bad time, it's boring. The logistics were just awful too. It was shit really logistics. Planned out. Yeah. Probably way more money spent too. Oh, dude. We went to like the biggest club in Toronto for no fucking reason. Yeah. On New Year's, like have fun getting an Uber out of that place. Oh, peak bro. hour. Oh, like $100 Uber. Plus the hotel. <laughs> and the fucking alcohol. Oh, my God, dude. May as well have fucking gone to Vegas. It would have been cheaper. Oh, and the drugs. New Year's? Oh, yeah. That's, Everybody's dropping. It's a lot of noses right there. They're skiing. Yeah. 
And you're up till 5 fucking a.m.? And then the next morning, this is the worst part about going out with your girl's friends for New Year's. The next morning, they don't want to just eat anything. They want to go to fucking brunch oh. at the place of the longest lineup because they saw it on fucking blog TO. Crepes. Oh, my. Yeah. Fucking crepes. French you're just, toast. You're just like sitting there with the mother of all hangovers. Like, get me a fucking farmer's wrap right now and I'll fucking inhale it. Give me like, a fucking no, double We're double. waiting two hours in line on New Year's Day for fucking crepes. Bro, it's like that with everywhere. Like, after fucking Queen's Foco this year, we uh, went to the Denny's in town. Mm-hmm. And there was like a 45-minute fucking line. <laughs> yeah. We had to go to the Denny's that's like an hour back on the way home from where we came from. Yeah. Every girl, though, they need to have that fucking morning photo. You know. Yeah, the pancake pick. Pancake pick, yeah. With with the whipped cream and the fucking... The strawberries and shit. That, uh, what's that icing sugar? It's like powdery. Oh, yeah, powdered sugar. Yeah, and they all look like shit, dude, too. They're just yeah. like rough, man. Yeah. Because they spent like three hours on their outfit, but now they're in sweatpants and you know, whatever. Well, they look human. They look... It's kind of weird when you think about it, the idea that like it's just default that women dress up and wear makeup like every single day. It's weird, eh? Because we don't. No. Our default doesn't like shock people. Like if you ever see a girl with makeup and then like you see her in in public, like at the thrift store on an off day, she's not wearing it. You're like, she'll say hi. And you're like, oh, sorry, do I know you? (laughs) Yeah. dude. For a split second, you don't even recognize her. Right. It's crazy, bro. Well, what it says is that like, look, if you're a guy and you want to like, you know, get surgery or wear makeup or fucking, you know, bleach your hair or whatever. Fine. But like guys don't need to. Women need to do that to get a guy. It says it all. If women didn't need to wear makeup, then they wouldn't. If they were, in their opinion, attractive enough to the guys that they wanted to, they wouldn't necessarily need that makeup in theory. But when a girl is wearing makeup, she has just that extra little edge that gets her the attention of the guys that she actually wants, right? Damn, dude. It makes you wonder if no girls could wear makeup what we would like rate a a five and a 10, like where everything would sit. It'd be like a big global adjustment. How many points do you think makeup adds on a girl on the one to 10 scale? Depends if they can like contour that shit pretty good. I would say it can, bro, I've seen some TikToks. It can bring like a one to a 10. Oh my God, dude. The TikTok people? It's like, bro, it's like from Mr. Bean's fucking maid to a celebrity. Like it's, crazy dude we're talking like four or five hours we're talking money like they spent money yeah they put cake on their fucking face prosthetics at that point bro but like on an average day like a girl doesn't have time to spend four hours on makeup she has like 40 minutes an hour max we're not all james charles right so i'd say it only goes man yeah even even normal girls two points probably i'd say two to three if we're being yeah Three on the extreme. On average, yeah. yeah. Club girls, bro, three points. They go yeah. At least three. Club makeup three for sure. Bro, if a girl's hot without makeup, that's what's up. Yeah. That's the litmus test right there. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Because that, then you know that's like smoke show territory, right? And there. for genetics. Yeah. Your baby ain't coming out with fucking contours. Maybe you. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> See where science gets us. Holy but... fuck. Tangent there. Okay. Yeah. You passed the New Year's test. Now we're going into the, uh, I would say it's the, uh, the finish line almost. Mm-hmm. Like we're going good. You know? Yeah. You got through the early tests. Mm-hmm. Now you're back. Yeah. You're back in school or university or whatever. Holidays are over. New semester, new me. Past the fucking New Year's Eve test. Mm-hmm. Now you guys are like a thing. It's legit. Locked confirmed. in. Confirmed. Because you're back. And what do you do when you come back after all the holidays? Mm-hmm. You fill people in on what's new. What's the new what's the new status? And that new status is you guys are together now. Oh yeah. Right. Now this is where I think a lot of guys put their foot off the fucking gas. They're mm-hmm. like, "Oh man, I made it." Yeah. Dude, we went out on New Year's. I can take it easy now. No, bro. Yeah. The game keeps going. Oh, it does. Can't get lazy. <sighs> Cuz if you do, there's another fucking big date coming up. Oh, yeah. The date of all. Valentine's. V-Day. Now you got to buy girls more shit. Fuck. <laughs> oh, so it's, <laughs> it's so expensive, bro. Dude. This is like why I've almost always avoided cuffing season is because Valentine's Day is such a fucking expense. Yeah. It's like a ridiculous one. You got to get a fucking ring or a neck? No. 
got to take her to fucking dinner, some sort of entertainment, probably a gift. Yeah. You're looking at a few hundred bucks, but yeah, it became a status thing. Here's the thing though, Jack, the reason that Valentine's day in a cuffing season context is so important is because you guys came back. It's January, new year. Hmm. Everyone's asking you, Oh, what's new? I haven't seen since before the holidays. Oh, you know, I'm seeing so-and-so now we're official. Now the expectation from all the friends is like, Oh, what did he do for you for Valentine's day? What is he mm. planning for you for Valentine's day? What kind of post are you going to put up on Valentine's day with like, you know, the gift, the experience yeah. that he bought you, right? Well, you just sold them all on the fact you're together now, but if Valentine's day, you don't post anything, what happened? Mm -hmm. You thought you had it in the bag. It's like, Telling everybody you got a new job and then yeah. two weeks later, what happened? Well, I'm not working there anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So there's there's pressure on Valentine's Day. Yeah, there's expectations. There are social expectations that if you are dating somebody, you have to be doing something for Valentine's. Even if it's a story. Like if you're one of those people that don't post, you gotta have like a story of you guys holding hands or clinking glasses, you know. But if you're posting a photo, it better motherfucking be with your uh girlfriend or boyfriend, oh, yeah. bro. So because of the pressure of other people, whether it's social media or your friend circle, it actually makes you commit to the relationship more. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, we're locked in now. We're getting a photo now. Like instead of marketing myself as like a girl that just wears thirst trap fucking outfits all the time, I have a boyfriend on Valentine's day. Mm -hmm. What's up? You're letting other guys know like, Hey, yeah, slow down. Right. Slow down tiger. Well, it's a status symbol to them because mm -hmm. girls are like, you know, like, dude, girls are petty. Like no guy is like thinking, yeah, man, like I'm going to show all my boys I'm dating a hot chick. <laughs> we don't care. Yeah. Girls though. It's like, yeah, well, you know what? You fucked that guy I liked in first year. Well, now I got a hot boyfriend and that you, you still don't have anybody. You mm -hmm. know? Like they like to see other people, you know, miserable and alone on Valentine's. What's up with that, man? so dark competition anxiety bro that's fucked up if you're a guy low-key you don't actually want to post that you're with a chick on valentine's day bro if i'm a guy and i'm single on valentine's day i'm fucking happy i'm like oh yeah i made it out alive this year that's a big one yeah but also if you're a guy on valentine's day and you don't post a photo then we don't know if you have a girlfriend or not yeah Facts. so if you have a rotation going if you're banging like four or five chicks and you don't post a girlfriend pic Technically, you're still single, mm -hmm. right? If you post a girlfriend pic and you have a rotation of four or five chicks, you're basically ready to lose a lot of those girls, you know, because if you're in a relationship where you have a main chick and it's cool with banging other chicks, like if you're at that level, then like, yeah, like it's pretty gangster. But if you're not, then your, uh, your house of cards will fall, bro. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. if you're wheeling like four or five chicks and then you post a photo with your girlfriend, you're shooting yourself in the fucking foot, dude. Yeah. Don't be that guy, guys. That's happens. And you know what? Like, no matter how hard you're pressured to post that pic, don't do it. No? I say don't do it. Well, if you're wheeling other birds. If you're wheeling other birds, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's like, a rookie. Do not put yourself in. Like, don't destroy the roster. No. No, yeah. Some the, girls actually pay attention to that shit. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. bro, the roster will never let you down. No. Because you failed the, like, if you did that to them. Mm -hmm. What would you do to them? You know? Yeah. It's one thing if you see them with a girl, but any, any fucking day of the year besides Valentine's Day. Yeah. And there's that drama. And there's also like, well, it's ran its course over the holidays. You know, now there's too much pressure and expectation. I don't want to post a photo with them. Mm -hmm. And they think about that a week or two before Valentine's Day. And they go, you know what? I got to end it before then. Or immediately after. So that that way, like, we all get through it together, but then yeah. after like, okay, now like we move on. And I find it one of the biggest things is most couples are about ready for it mid to end January, but someone has bought some sort of reservation for the Valentine's day date, whether mm. it's a ticket to the romantic movie that fucking premieres that day, yeah. whether it's reservations at the nice restaurant, you know, whether it's a fucking wine tour, whether it's a concert, like whatever it is. Yeah. Someone's made a fucking reservation and your entire relationship is fucking hanging on by a thread of that reservation. And once you fulfill that obligation, we have nothing, we have no further commitments here together. For men, it's much more of an independent or based on, you know, external things. But for women, bro, it's also like, what are all my friends doing? 
if all her girls are single and Valentine's Day is coming up. Oh. You know, but if they're all cuffed up, even if if a girl doesn't even like a guy, but all her friends have boyfriends, and then, you know, social expectation obligations are coming up, like mm-hmm. a birthday or Valentine's, she'll stay with that guy. 100%. 100%. Yeah, so let's talk about the transition out of cuffing season then. The transition out of cuffing season? Yeah, so Valentine's Day ends. Let's say even a couple like is still together on Valentine's Day, like starting to warm up. Mm. What's happening now? Well, much like in nature, guys, hibernation ends. People come out of their motherfucking caves. The sun starts to come out. Snow changes to rain. People start to progressively get happier take more clothes off, start to see what other people look like after the winter. That's a big one. A lot of people come out of winter looking like shit. (laughs) Yeah. They let themselves go. They get those chocolates. They get into a relationship. And when they're in a relationship, they don't work out as much. And yeah, dude, everybody kind of looks like shit, right? Yeah. And at that point, you're now in like late Feb. Maybe you made it through Valentine's, right? Mm -hmm. You know, this timeline is only really for people that keep making it through. You know, we we lost a lot of kings at Thanksgiving, bro. (laughs) A lot of kings didn't even make it to Christmas. Yeah, a lot of kings. So for all the kings didn't even get cuffed in the first (laughs) place. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to the kings that watched this far. (laughs) Didn't even make it the fucking first week of September. (laughs) Okay, so yeah, so the kings that made it through Valentine's, right? Now this is where things get a little more serious because it's like, hey, well, we're done school in April. About to have four months of, you know go back home what are we gonna do are we gonna maintain this shit you know am i gonna get that co-op or me and the girls gonna move out west and work at a fucking bar in muskoka like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of what ifs right people start to plan what they're doing for the summer yeah guys do this too i remember uh one summer me and my boys we decided we're gonna be forest firefighters so we all moved northern ontario like 15 hours from here Mm -hmm. so that's when those decisions start to come up also, you start to think more logically, like, okay, they live four hours away from me when we're not in school. That's too fucking far. Mm-hmm. What are we just going to chill every weekend? Well, what are my plans on weekends? Do my, do my girls also have boyfriends? Are they in long distance relationships or are they going to be single and they want to hit the club every weekend, right? Yeah. All this stuff starts to build up and uh, come into play. But at that point, I feel like people are more mature about it, you know? They've shown enough genuine interest in each other that they made it through reading week, Halloween, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's. Like, Mm -hmm. that's a lot. But they realize that it just can't work because of the one important thing that we tell you guys all the time. Logistics. They have a mature conversation. Mm -hmm. This summer, we're either going to do long distance or we just shouldn't be together. That's when cuffing season ends. And it's a very polite way of saying, look, it's fucking hot girl summer. What are we doing here? Look, I like you, but I want to go fuck Chad, bro. I want to go out with the girls and get a bunch of kills. You're nice, though. You're a great boyfriend. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Guys are just like, yo, dude, I can't wait to fucking start a job this summer. And, you know, I got my puss on weekends. Like, we're just pumped to have a fucking chick that's cool and supports us. But yeah. You know, we're, we're not trying to like, oh, that girl over there is hotter. You know, like we need to, we need to, we're very simple, right? Mm. We don't fuck around in the first place when we pick a girl. We just go, okay, like, yeah, she's cool. But girls, they always need to follow the hypergamy and go for a higher level guy. And when that guy's not around, you know, and he's texting a lot, he's insecure, gets a little scarce. Chad, bro, you know, he's fucking chill. He's buying everybody drinks at the bar, knows everybody there. Mm. Sup, girl, what's going on? Where's your boyfriend? Where's that pussy? Boom. <sighs> Chad, bro's coming in there, smashing. Anyways, though, I think that uh, cuffing season is like an age-old tale. I think that yeah. you guys hopefully will now be able to see it for what it is. Um, it is a good thing. Like, it's not a bad thing, really. Because a lot of guys that would normally not be able to get into relationships, they can because it's cuffing season. And a lot of girls that essentially can just, you know, really easily get a boyfriend because they feel like it, they can do it too. And then there's like a timeline of events for them to decide when to dump the guy. Mm -hmm. So there's a fair value exchange on both sides, I'd say. 
But um, I would recommend the cuffing season experience. I think it's good. I also think that like you can fuck a bunch of chicks the first couple months and then over the winter, you know. Yeah. When it gets, by the way, harder to go out and do dates anyway. Yeah. It's nice to have someone who's just down to chill, cuddle and Dude, yeah. You know, you know, cuffing season's just like a, a journey. Yeah. And maybe it'll be an extended one, maybe it won't be, but enjoy the journey. Yeah. And don't be too picky, boys, because let's be honest, nobody's cold approaching in fucking four inches of snow, all right? Nobody's stopping girls outside of the fucking library or whatever when they're bundled up wearing 15... Li- like, you don't even know what girls look like, bro. Yeah. Dude, do you ever fucking approach a girl during winter, get her number, and then you meet for a date in, like, a restaurant, and then you take the coats off, and she's a whale? I've had, like, the opposite, where she's wearing, like, a puffy jacket. She takes it off, and she's, like, petite and, like, curvy. Really? Like, oh, damn. Like, okay. <sighs> that Hello. is a high-risk reward <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bro. But yeah, guys, it's easier to meet girls in the summer. And uh, if you want to play the field, but then like, you know, just, you know what? Take the girls dating strategy. This is what women do every single year. This is what they do. And statistics show it. Like the most common times for breakup are uh, New Year's and Valentine's. Mm -hmm. And then they go smash chats in the summer. Or, you know, maybe you guys work it out, but. Or just become the Chad too. That's the real play. Yeah. You know. (laughs) But in order to become Chad bro, you have to be a good bro and bad bro first. And that's what we find out. Every Chad bro has an origin story, bro. Stay toxic. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe. We drop these every single week. Follow Cringe Daddy Official on TikTok and Instagram. Join the Discord, okay? If you disagree with us, if you disagree with cuffing season, if you have your own story, join the Discord. Tell everybody in there about it. In the Discord, we break down these videos and we chat about it. Guys like you watching that have your own story. Girls too. If you're a girl and you think that I'm a retard, drop it in the comments below. Hit the like button though, okay? Make sure that we get these uh, videos recommended to everybody in the algorithm. Because the more people see this, the more people understand what it's like to get a girlfriend, how to play cuffing season properly, and how to understand male and female nature as a young man in 2022.